Hello, gorgeous people. Kulchi Bekher. That's from Morocco. That's saying, are you all right? I'm sure you are. Today I'm talking about balance. Balance, man. How do we get it? And what can we do to become more balanced? I'll tell you all about it on the other side. So in a recent conversation with the emissaries, I was talking about strength. In fact, they were talking about strength. They mentioned strength. And I said to them, so how do we become strong? What do we have to do to be strong? And what they said was that we need balance. Right? Makes sense, doesn't it? We need balance. And I said, so what, what do you mean balance? They said, well, we need balance in all of the areas of our life. So we know we've got physical, we've got mental, we've got emotional and we've got spiritual okay and they said that the key is to get balance across all of them now that's a job for life okay we're all in it it's not easy to get balance and sometimes we overcompensate don't we in other areas and that's what the emissaries were talking about they said not only do we need to find balance in our physical spiritual and emotional but also we need to find balance in our their list that they give me ideas beliefs and values so big job big job okay but let's break it down well what, what they did was they give me this analogy and they showed me um, a muscle builder now i don't know if you are a muscle builder or if you know people or you've seen them who build muscles so they go to the gym every day and they work different parts of the body and they become very physically strong however the downside to their physical strength is that they become what's called muscle bound and that means if you say to a, a muscle builder can you just touch your hands behind your back they can't do it they can't because the muscles won't allow them they are inflexible and that's a problem especially if you've got an itchy back in the middle bit of a bugger you have to go and scratch against a, a tree like horses do however what the emissaries were saying was that there are other bounds that we can be we can be spiritually bound we can be physically bound, muscle bound, but we can be spiritually bound. We can be conspiracy bound. We can be vitamin bound or food bound. All of the places in our life where we don't have flexibility makes us bound to that. That makes us rigid and therefore we're not balanced. And I'm gonna talk about conspiracy bound in another video, okay? Because I've been there. Sometimes I still am there, but we'll talk about that later on. But I was saying to them, okay, so what about spiritually bound? How do you avoid being trapped in, in a, a paradigm of, of spirituality? So I wanted to find out from the emissaries more on being spiritually bound, stuck spiritually, and how do you avoid that? What they said was that spirituality is based on our belief and our faith and what they said was the most important thing to find balance in your spirituality is not to adopt the faith of others and they went on to explain what they mean by that what they said was that don't just take a faith and adopt it and make it your own a faith that's already been created by somebody else that what they were saying was don't take somebody else's faith and don't you know we're not just talking about individuals but groups i mean we've got faiths that have been built and they're so like this is the faith and you, you take it on it's like buying a franchise you know if you want a mcdonald's franchise and nobody would want one of those would they but imagine that you did you just buy it and it's already set up it's there you don't need to reinvent anything it's all made well it's the same with faith you can take on a faith that's already made, created. So you ask questions, you know, what about this? And what does Jesus mean? And what does God mean? And what's happening after we die? And what happens before we die? Blah, 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 blah. That's a set faith. And what the emissary said was, do not fall into the trap of taking on somebody's faith. Why? Because when we have somebody else's faith, it's not ours. 
And you know, faith can move mountains, but if it's not yours, it's a bit more difficult. The mountains are a bit smaller than that we can move. We can still move mountains with faith, even if it's not ours, if it's an adopted faith. But the emissaries were suggesting that the best faith that we can build is a faith that's built up of pieces that resonate with us. Because if you look at every faith, I mean, I, you know, I listen to people who talk about their faith and I think, hey, that resonates, that resonates. I'm really cool with that. I'm not sure about that. That doesn't sit with me. And this is the problem with piecemeal faiths, that there's something for everybody in there, but not everything for everybody. What the emissaries were saying was that our faith has to be built in pieces. So it doesn't matter if you want to steal. I mean, I've done this. I've done this all of my life. I'd steal. That resonates with me. I'll steal that for my faith. And I like that. And I'll steal that for my faith. I think every religion, every faith has so many pieces that are beautiful, beautiful. And then pieces that, well, for me personally, are not that beautiful. But hey, what's not beautiful for me might be beautiful for you. But you take the pieces and you form your faith. You create your faith. And based on that, then you can start to move mountains. A faith that's strong, that's built upon, and what's very important, you have to do the homework. You don't just take something just without investigating it. And I know lots of people who built the faith have done years and years of study. And that's what's important. Because once you've got your faith, remember faith can get you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. And it can get you to say no to things that you wouldn't normally say no to. So you've got to make sure that your faith is built on something tangible, something that's true for you. Remember, there is no truth, but true for you. And once you've done that, nothing can move it and nothing can move you. And that's what we need. What we need now is rigidity. Unfortunately, we need rigidity. Rigidity to say, hey, this far, no further. The world that we live in is a world of, I mean, I, look, let's come off script. I'm gonna talk about what I see. 